So, what is intuition? Um, intuition is simply um, um, a way of recognition, a recognition which is beyond thought. So, it's not for the me? No, it doesn't need to be a me for there to be intuition. No, intuition just is what it is. It's, a, it's like a leap beyond the logical into a sense of, of something. It's like in a certain way this is a leap. There can be a, you, know, you can't work this out, but there can be a sudden, ah, even, even in terms of understanding or what the intuition is beyond understanding, but they can be an intuitive sense of this. And then you can be sure that's not the me. Or oh, absolutely. Yeah. Or can the me take this intuition? Oh, well, the me would take ownership of it right away. Correctly, the aha arises. It's possible that the me will then take ownership. It's possible they won't. There isn't, there's no, not any more. And what it would do is take what intuitively is recognised and turn it back into a concept or belief. Or try to. right to say that the oneness and the easiness is right in front of uh, my eyes, but I don't, there is nobody to notice it, that's why I miss it? In a, yeah, I think it, it's probably, um, what, what will be said here is that there is only oneness, therefore it wouldn't be right in front of your eyes, it is also your eyes. But I miss it in a way because there is nobody to notice it? Well, you miss it, uh, the, the me misses it by being aware of what is in front of its eyes. But if there is no me, and actually the idea of me is just making what is to mine, how can it make any 
self-conclusion of its own. Oh, there's no, no, it doesn't. The, when there's no me, there's no conclusion. So it could not register the oneness. No, no. And nothing but the me can regis register the oneness. Nothing. Nothing but me is able to register. Well, it, then it registers what it believes to be the oneness, but it's not the oneness. It's a dualistic perception. But when there's no me, there's nothing that recognizes oneness. So there's no way to recognize oneness. No. <laughs> That's what I'm So whatever I am is I not. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to Whatever you are, if you're me, things it uh, is, is. Whatever I know, I'm not. But there is no other possibility to register anything but myself, which is never it. Absolutely. The only way me exists is by knowing it does. So whatever I can notice is the versions of. Um, yeah. Ideas. It's the me I will version. never see me. It, yes, it's the me version of reality, which is dualistic. When that collapses, there's nothing that knows. Nothing knows, or it's what I know is not mine. No, because you're back to me. What you know is not your more yours is a story that me comes out of me. There isn't something that there isn't something that knows it doesn't know. It just is what it is. When you come back into the me, there's a knowing or an awareness or a consciousness of what is, and that's um, an illusion. Stuart's me. The only me arises, everything is split into two. Boom! Or apparently, or obviously it isn't because it it's split, everything is split into two. Directly me arises, everything is apart. Me and the world. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the one you think is there isn't, isn't the one that is. Because you can't know the one. Me can't know one because it splits everything into two. You see, the essence of me is to, it can only exist in a, in a, a dualistic reality. How can it think itself? How can it think itself? Can a thought Very think easy. itself? <laughs> oh, who thinks like this? Me. Together of putting Me together thinks. the information. Somebody does that. No, when a thought arises, me is aware of it. And makes it its own. Absolutely. So there is a thought. Or well, there isn't anything. Everything is only nothing appearing as what it is. Thought is nothing appearing as a thought. It is real and unreal. <coughs> for, the, for the me, it seems to be real because I'm real. I'm real because my thought is real. Would it still be real without me? No, it would be real and unreal. But not for anything. There is now with no me, nothing that knows that this is real and unreal. It just is real and unreal. If something knew it was real and unreal, it would be standing apart from it to know it. Or there would be somebody that would compare what's real and what's not real. This Comparison is a story. There's nothing wrong with stories, mm -hmm. but they are nothing appearing as a story. But the problem for me is that me thinks they are real and absolutely, totally important, especially if they're about me. <laughs> I thought my, my story was probably more important than anybody else's in the world. Much more interesting and special. <coughs> you know that thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So
um, the holographic universe is uh, just an idea? No, no. An idea is something that arises for me, the idea or thought of the universe is uh, in a way a confirmation of something felt. The universe is nothing universal. It's real and unreal. It's not just an idea, that's an incredibly superficial description of it. The, the, the apparent universe that, that appeared, appeared long before bloody people got into the planet and had ideas about it. You know, we're so amazingly arrogant. The, the individual is so incredibly arrogant, he thinks the planet couldn't exist without it having an idea of it existing. Self inquiry people actually believe that nothing can exist except in their awareness. It's amazing. It's a sort of incredible self indulgence. Mm. The metaphor of the world, of the earth, <coughs> is that there were things apparently happening millions of years before human beings managed to get on. Yeah, they claim that they, nothing can happen without them. It's so sweet. <laughs> uh, and the idea of oneness is also it's just an idea. the same. <laughs> so it's uh, it's energetic. Artificial. Energetic. Ideas are just thoughts, stories about something. Mm -hmm. But all there is is what is and isn't. And any model of perceiving the world is any to model of perceiving the world. A, a what world? Perceiving the world. Perceiving the oh, world. Is me perceiving it. I perceive the world. me stands apart and perceives the world. There isn't a world to perceive. There's only the appearance of the world. There's only the... The appearance. Everything is only an appearance. Uh, but what you appear, you recognize. Uh, <laughs> you know what <laughs> No, there is no recognition. There's only recognition, only me recognizes or is aware of or knows the world. What it knows is a fantasy. Even if it's physical world, like material as well? Can't hear. Even the materialistic world as well? The material world. Like, you know, the difference between that's my, that's, my imagination that's, and a chair. That, that chair is what is. That chair is nothing chair. The world is nothing worldly. It's an appearance. The chair is an appearance. It's an appearance in my mind, but it has a physical presence. All the time, me is there. Me thinks it's aware of the chair and makes it a solid, real chair. When there's no me, it's always. The, the chair is just what it is, being and not being. It's a mystery. In what way not being, if oh, you can? it's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to know. Uh, it's not about the frequency. It's not about... The frequency. No, no, it's another. Manika. Mind, there's a mind fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the line between knowing and not knowing is uh, something like a kiss. The line between knowing and not knowing is the difference between separation and harmony. That which knows is separate, that which is everything is unknown.
Yes. <laughs> um, how is it about uh, science? There's also a subject or picture about science and research. There's also a subject or picture relation. And the, um, the, um, the knowing about our world, this real or non real world works. I, I can't understand why I have the science. M maybe physics or maybe Well, physicists are coming to the same conclusion, except they can't quite get to the last bit. Physicists these days have established that the wall yeah. of physics is made up of moving particles. Yeah. which simply seem to take the form of a wall. Yeah. Um, uh, um, and they're, they're looking, you know, they're trying to find the origin of, uh, of the world and how it's possible that what they call dark matter, mm -hmm. dark matter which is nothing, yeah. okay. uh, becomes mass. Yeah. Okay. So they think they've got very close to that. Um, by finding something called uh, the Higgs boson particle or something. Mm. And now what they've established is that the Higgs boson particle is, is dark matter and then becomes matter. Mm. So it goes like that, but much more quickly than I'm doing. <laughs> 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 but but it works. But yeah. that's yeah. still a story. Yeah. <laughs> what they can what they can't possibly um, logically accept mm -hmm. is that dark matter and matter are simultaneously, or they're the same thing. Yeah. They just they don't become one or the other. They are both the same thing. Mm -hmm. They don't. They can't logically, obviously, explain or accept that. Mm -hmm. Although many scientists are now open to the possibility mm -hmm. of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. that, is, that nothing is also everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't, you know, that, that, that's difficult for science because mm -hmm. somehow it contradicts all the theories they so far have about. about. But um, what they are knowing about our world works in practical. This, in this no, it fits yeah. into their theory. It fits into their theory. Yeah. It's a story. It's not the reality. The natural reality is that no thing is everything. The scientific conclusion is that the no thing becomes everything. Yeah. But if we take a mobile phone, we wouldn't we wouldn't have it without this knowing. Oh well, science is a wonderful thing, you know, washing machines and all that. But it doesn't make any the slightest difference to any me becoming more fulfilled. It just means the washing gets done quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so then they have more time to think about why they aren't fulfilled. So <laughs> it's a sort of curse. <laughs> but they do wear the cleaning clothes, so that makes uh, But for me, it's a question this unreal works uh, real. Sorry? This is this unreal real. The unreal. the unreal is real. real the real, the real is unreal. Uh, and is it, 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 is, it works uh, in, with the background of uh, science. Oh yeah, well it's... There are, two thing, there are two theories. One is about black holes and the other one is about quantum physics. So on this blackboard you see this amazing... You know, it starts up here, x equals y, and it goes on for miles like this. Both of them confirm theories, you know, the, the, the scientist view of the theory of black holes. And the last final result of everything is equals infinity. And the same with quantum physics. The, the theory of quantum physics goes on and on like this, and it equals, at the end it equals infinity. And it pisses them off totally. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. I mean, this was on the horizon recently. They are pissed off with the bloody word infinity. It's never really comprehensive. <laughs> so it destroys all, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
the Lord. So how is it that uh, um, we have all similar? No, that there's energy behind it. It's all uh, like nothing and everything is the same. You see, and well, the way the way we conceive it, or we conceive it, or the different we conceive it is very similar. Well, it's not quite the same because what, what the me sees is a separation between the two. Because it's all I don't think it's like a superimposition. What what the the me puts on? on yes, the, it imposes on. It imposes that on which is everything. Uh, our, our dualism. And it's very similar from person to person. Well, there are seven point two billion realities, but I think the population's gone up a bit since. <laughs> But, there, but are, the there, many, there are as many realities as there are people. Yeah, sure, but, but there are similarities. No, they are similar, yeah. yeah. But not quite the same. So, uh, how do you explain this? <laughs> you can't, really. Such a fear all the time. Well, it's schizophrenic. Yeah. I mean, he lives in a sort of split world yeah. where um, it grows up in, in a reality which is illusory, but the reality of being separate. So it's obviously scared because it lives in a world which seems separate from it and, and in some ways seems to be threatening. Not And so 
uh, after the war, when there isn't anybody left, there is still what happens, or what seems to happen, and what also you could say seems to happen, is the energy of fear. They could, there's, there's, let's say, let's presume there's fear in this room. So that's what it is. Why is the knee so needy for all the other knees? Sorry. Why is the knee so needy to all the other knees? You do why? Why, is why, why do I need so much the other knee? Oh, because you need, me lives in constant need. Yeah. Because it's bereft, because it feels it's lost home or lost something. Mm -hmm. And it constantly tries to take in comfort or or something to make you feel better about being separate. So it constantly is looking for something. It constantly needs love or food or money or whatever you like. It's because it feels so lost. Because it feels so lost. All the time. All the time, all the time. All the time it apparently is there. Yeah. Of course that's a very you know, transient energy. The me is there sometimes and not others. At all the time it seems to appear in its in, in its finite reality than it needs. It can only need. <coughs> it looks for love or food or money or wealth or enlightenment. It never none of those satisfied because of course it can't become enlightened. And then he, he, I don't mean, he, he only feels satiated for a short while.
is a thought. How would that be true no. to say no? So, so <coughs> me perceives the world in a certain way, and then we think about it. Then the thought could arise. Thought, a thought really is only a confirmation of something that's already happened or will happen. Because I understood with the example of the chair and the thoughts being the same, I thought it's only a mind process. No, it absolutely isn't. The idea that things arise only through a thought is a fairly superficial one. There are okay. two realities. Me looking at a chair sees a dualistic chair. Okay. <laughs> and when, me, when there is just a chair, it simply is nothing chairing or it's weird. And un <clears throat> but as a perceived object, so you can only say, you cannot say it's a chair, you can say this. Actually, it's, it's but so it's actually in object. reality you can't say anything. Just pointed it. Yeah, well, you don't have to even point at it. It just is what it is. The only you say it's a chair, in a sense, you're labeling it as something else. <coughs> there isn't a you to label it. When there's no me, there's nothing that labels anything. There is only what it is. Thank you. Um, Tommy? Um, I'm, I'm a bit confused about, um, you say, uh, like, there's no free will and choice, and um, me never really did anything. And on the other hand, you say like um, me takes ownership of things. That sounds like maybe me takes, for example, ownership. Of oh yeah, like but it, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't willfully take ownership. But the nature or the essence of me is to is to uh, gather everything in as though it is being experienced by the me. There is no will or choice to do that. That's what the nature or the essence of the energy. Of, of me is to own or take ownership of everything or feel that everything is happening to it. So it's, it's like a function? Yeah. And it comes out of nothing? So it's the same as the function of seeing the chair as a dualistic chair. There isn't anything that does it, but that's what appears to happen. Right, so that's part of the illusion. Yeah, yeah so it's, yeah. Several times I got pissed off this, uh, no, this and I realized at the moment that me has uh, absolutely two different faces. The one is a fascinating thing which gives the illusion that I can get something. That you can get something. Yeah, that's the illusion of the oh, me. Yeah, so it's yeah. still, it's, it suggests, it hypnotizes <coughs> in some way. Absolutely, it's not a dream. And um, no, but that's just one side. The other side is that it's the most frustrating thing because it never, um, it never fulfills what it surprises, yeah. uh, what is, uh, what is, um, it suggests. Yes, yeah, although so really, in a sense, they're both the same thing. The, the me grows up in the illusion that it can, uh, can find fulfillment, and that's yeah. what prevents it from finding fulfillment because there isn't any fulfillment to find. Yeah. It presumes there's an object out there called fulfillment. There isn't an object out there called fulfillment. This is fulfillment! <laughs> I 
knowledge is everything. How can you find something in everything? You know, that, that which is longed for hides from the seeker by being everything already. Isn't that bloody marvelous? <laughs> That's amazing. So what the seeker longs for is already everything. So the seeker can't find it because the seeker is looking for something in the everything. It looks for a treasure in the everything, and everything is a treasure. And so they both did the way how. And that's the way how the seeker first tries himself. Absolutely, and it's, it's a total piss off. Yeah, exactly, that's what I meant. How is it possible to to live in uh, it's not <laughs> when when the me is 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 gone come uh, back to the original how to live in a world of me <laughs> well <laughs> being so orientated to the seeking outside and how 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 can I abide in this summary book? There isn't a we to abide in this. There's nothing to abide in. Well, you're asking what all seekers ask, and that is how. Give me an answer to how I can go on living. Well, you can't go on living because there isn't an answer there. Yeah. Uh, so there is no answer.
Thank <laughs> you.